This is a beautiful day. We're doing a beautiful thing today. We pray that you will be honored in all that happens right now. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Dear family and friends, we are gathered in the presence of God and these assembled witnesses to join Austin and Sarah in the bonds of holy matrimony. It is our understanding, it is our belief that marriage and the wedding through which it begins are greatly honored by God. This can be clearly seen in the pages of Scripture. The Bible begins with a wedding in Genesis chapter 2, and it ends with a wedding in Revelation 19. Christ's first miracle took place at a wedding. And when Matthew in his gospel described the ministry of Christ, he compared it to the wedding of a king. But perhaps marriage reached its highest pinnacle of significance when the Apostle Paul, guided by the Holy Spirit, made the relationship between a husband and a wife the symbol of the relationship between Christ and his church. So Austin and Sarah, uh, the foundation of of marriage is God. And just as Matthew's gospel stressed the importance of building your life upon the rock, which is God, I stress to you the importance of building your marriage upon that very same rock. With the shifting sands and the blowing winds of our culture and of man's nature, it is only upon that rock that your marriage can be the fulfillment of all that God intends for it to be. So Austin, Having placed your faith in Christ and his sacrifice for you on the cross, have you come to the place in your spiritual life where you know for certain that you have received eternal life? Sarah, having placed your faith in Christ and his sacrifice on the cross, have you come to the place in your spiritual life where you know for certain that you have received eternal life? This is a special honor uh, for me. It's an honor to be a part of this because I know your hearts. I know of your love for the Lord. Austin, I know that you are a man of integrity, a man of humility, and a man of passion for the things of God. And Sarah, the, the love you have for the Lord is seen in the love that you show for others. I've watched God use the two of you change the lives of our college students. And Sarah, your self, selfless love for my youngest daughter, I will never be able to repay. The two of you have done this the right way. You've involved your, your parents in the process. That says something about them, and it says something about you, and it says something about the kind of marriage that you're going to enjoy. You have not left behind your relationship with God and your service for the kingdom to pursue one another. And that is rare. Jesus said, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and he'll add all these other things to you. This is what all these other things looks like. I know pastors are not supposed to make comparisons when they speak, but I'm going to make an exception. <laughs> I've done many, many weddings. I've done weddings for family and for very close friends. I've done weddings for some very godly and mature people. But I've never officiated a wedding where I felt like the couple did it the right way, just like you've done it the right way. And so that brings us to the vows. Love comes from the very mind and heart of God. And married love is one of the crowning achievements of his creation. It is one of the most valuable gifts that he gives to his children. In the Bible, we find many wonderful expressions of, of his love for us and the love that we can have for one another. And I just want to read some of those for you today. 1 Corinthians 13, If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels but have not love, I am a noisy gong or a clinging symbol. If I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge and I have all faith so as to remove mountains but have not love, I am nothing. If I give away all I have and if I deliver up my body to be burned but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not 
arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. As for prophecies, they will pass. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it too will pass. So now faith, hope, and love abide, these three, but the greatest of these is love. We find in the Bible book of Ruth, one of the greatest expressions of love ever written. Ruth said, don't urge me to leave you or turn back from you. Where you go, I will go, and where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people, and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. May the Lord deal with me, be it ever so severely, if anything, that death separates you and me. So married love is described so beautifully in Scripture, but perhaps most beautifully in the Song of Solomon, which says, Place me like a seal over your heart, like a seal on your arm, for love is as strong as death, its ardor as unyielding as the grave. It burns like a blazing fire, like a mighty flame. Many waters cannot quench love, and rivers cannot wash it away. So Austin and Sarah, if you, having confessed your faith in Christ, now build your marriage upon Him and upon the kind of love described in God's Word, then you will know the joy and peace that can only be wrought by God in the lives of those who love Him, love each other, joining the bonds of Christian marriage. So as a symbol of your choice as one another, husband and wife throughout your natural lives, you have gathered hands, joined hands, so we now give careful attention to these vows. I remind you, Austin and Sarah, as we've talked about, these vows that you make are not made to each other. These vows are made to God. We can always find reasons to break promises made to people. People will let us down. People will fall short. People will break promises. But these vows are your solemn promises not to each other, but to your Creator. And so I ask you to make them and hold them with a kind of devotion and respect the Lord, the God in heaven, your Savior, deserves. So Sarah, do you, Sarah, promise before God to take Austin to be your lawfully wedded husband, pledging to love him above all, accepting God and his will, to honor him compassionately, to support and encourage him, to stand by him through every difficulty, and to submit to him by trusting him and the love that he has for you, and to remain devotedly true to him in all things until death shall separate you. Do you, Austin, take Sarah, the woman of your choice before God, to be your lawful and only wife, promising to love her in every condition, to care for her in all need, to protect her from all harm, to consider her kindly in every desire, to be the spiritual leader of the family, seeking always to follow God's will for your relationship, and to remain devotedly true to her, until the party of death. Amen. Amen. Let me pray. Father, I pray that by the power of your Holy Spirit, that these promises, that these vows made to you will be vows that will be kept, that will be renewed, that will grow stronger every day and every year of this marriage. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Two of you wish to indicate the lifelong nature of this union, its purity, and its fidelity by the exchange of wedding rings. And in doing so, you're reminded that the unbroken circle of the ring represents and symbolizes the unending and everlasting love that you have for God and for one another. The purity of the ring represents the integrity and the authenticity of the love that you have pledged. But more than that, the ring represents a promise. The Greek word for wedding ring or engagement ring is erebos. And Paul used that word in the book of Ephesians when he said that the Holy Spirit is given as a guaranteed deposit or as an erebos or as a, as a wedding.
waiting rate to guarantee that what he has done will never be undone. Just as God sent the Holy Spirit as the earnest for his promise to those who believe, these wedding rings represent the holy promise that you are making to one another. So Austin, here is your bride's ring. If you will place that on her finger. I have some questions. <laughs> Do you, Austin, give this ring to Sarah as a token of your love and as the earnest for your promise? Sarah, will you receive this ring as a token of Austin's love? And will you wear it as a token of your love for him? Austin, repeat after me to Sarah. As I place this ring upon your hand, as I place this ring upon your hand, may our separate lives become one. May our separate lives become one. As I commit my everlasting